Do you even need to use a real estate agent when buying new construction? Stay tuned on the next Talk with Tracy and I'll give you a little bit of insight on buying new construction homes. I'm Tracy Tam coming to you from the beautiful South Florida area. Buying a new construction home versus a resale home are two totally different processes. Today I'm going to give you a few tips on how to make buying a new construction home a successful one. Today we won't be referencing the custom home builder who typically just builds out a couple of homes in a neighborhood. Today we'll be referencing the larger builder who is typically building out an entire community or an entire neighborhood. I'm going to give you a few tips. So tip number one, always use a realtor. Yes, buyers use realtors when buying new construction homes. Now I know that can be a little bit confusing because when you walk into the sales center, they have their own sales reps. But remember, those sales representatives are, built, are representing the builder and not representing you. That's why I always recommend that you use a realtor when buying new construction homes. A realtor who is familiar working the new construction process, like myself, can be very valuable to you. You should always pick your realtor before going to new construction homes. Why, you say? because the pen is mighty. If you register to see a model home, you know you fill out that little registration card. At that initial registration, you don't indicate that you are working with a realtor. You might not be able to bring in representation later on. So if you want your agent involved, or at least you want to have the option to have your agent involved, here are a few tips. So listen, realistically, life happens. One day you're driving around in the afternoon, you're driving by and you see those beautiful, vibrant balloons and open house signs, and it's the perfect opportunity for you and your entire family to go take a look at the sales center. It's okay. Just be upfront with the sales representative and let them know that you're either working with a realtor or that you want to reserve that right to work with the realtor in the future. And make sure when you sign in, you either put the realtor's name on that registration card or you make sure that you put that you reserve the right to have representation later on in the transaction. What I tell most of my buyers is if they have a card of mine, just to leave it with the registration card, but also make sure when my buyers sign in to also put my name on the registration card so I can represent them throughout the entire transaction. Realtors also don't like to come in after you've already started the process. We have great advice from beginning to end, so let us start the process with you. Listen, in reality, the sales rep might make you feel like you have to sign the registration card right now, even if you don't have your realtor's card, and they might make you feel like that's the last lot available, that certain beautiful corner lot on the lake that you have to have. And if you don't sign now, you're also gonna miss out on the $10,000 seller contribution from the builder, but don't worry. Take a deep breath, call your realtor, and I promise all of those upgrades and incentives will be there after you speak to your realtor and you'll be better off throughout the transaction. And now that we're done with tip number one, Let's talk about tip number two, understanding costs. There are a lot of different costs associated when buying new construction, but the two most important costs are construction costs and cosmetic costs. Having an experienced realtor by your side the entire time will help you keep on budget and tell you what's best to do during the construction phase and some of the things, cosmetic speaking, that might be better to do after you close. And sometimes you can save about 50% on those upgrades if you do them after you close versus doing them with the builder. So that's why you always want your realtor to discuss all of these things with you and make a plan and make a budget. So the first cost we're going to talk about is that beautiful advertised cost by those gorgeous vibrant balloons outside that made you walk in the sales center. Typically that's usually the baseline price. It's the price to get you a home and has all of the amenities to be a home but none of the upgraded finishes. None of the stainless steel appliances typically, none of the upgraded uh, kitchen cabinets, kitchen countertops, and most of the times different premium lots like a corner lot or a lake lot, those actually have upgraded premiums as well as do certain models. So different models of the home by the big builder will also have uh, different premium prices. 
So there's a lot to understand uh, about pricing that goes into versus just that baseline price that you see out on the sign or advertised in the newspaper. Uh, so make sure that you understand all of the costs when buying a new construction home. Like I said, there are construction costs and upgrades and there's cosmetic costs and cosmetic upgrades. Some are good to do during the construction process because it just makes sense and while the builder is there with um, a lot of the same flooring people, kitchen people, most of the time it will save you money. So there's a couple rules of thumb that I like to tell my buyers and I always say that as far as kitchens and floorings, those are usually good to do during the construction phase because they are messy and a pain to do after you've already closed on the home and they can get very, very costly. So those usually make sense to do during the construction phase. And also as far as construction upgrades, if you want an extra door, if you think that you might be having another child um, in the future and you want that option to add a, a door in between two rooms, that might make sense during the construction phase also. Uh, another thing is if you want maybe a door out the master bedroom that's not included, in the price of the builder's um, baseline price. So that upgrade might be good to do it during the construction phase because they're building the house and it just makes more sense to add that door outside to your pool from your master bedroom during the construction phase versus after closing. So there's a lot of things to understand about the upgrades, the construction cost upgrades, the cosmetic cost upgrades, and these are all things that your realtor can sit down with you and discuss and you guys can get a plan and actually be able to stay in budget on a lot of those things because once you go into the design center, the, the builder's realtor is going to push those design upgrades because that's really where the builder makes a lot of their money. So your realtor is going to be the one that's going to advise you on what the smart things are to upgrade and then what might be better just to wait, move into the home and maybe do it at a later, later date. So once again, those are just a few of the construction, cosmetic costs and different costs that um, go into purchasing a new construction home. So we've talked about tip number one, we've talked about tip number two. Now let's talk about tip number three, inspections. Do I really need an inspection when I'm buying a new construction home? What possibly could be wrong? Yes, there are county inspectors and city inspectors and they are actually inspecting the entire building process, but they're enforcing code. They're not actually inspecting to protect you. I actually recommend to my buyers to get two inspections, a pre-drywall inspection and after the drywall is up, I actually recommend to get a full inspection by a private inspector that is actually going out there to inspect everything for you. And to me, this is so important to have both inspections. The pre-drywall inspection obviously is more important because you can actually see what's going on with the plumbing and the electrical, all the things that can be very, very costly after you close that you can't see once the drywall is up. The full inspection I recommend doing probably a week before closing just so that you can have the full inspection report back and if there are any concerns you can sit down with the builder and your realtor and discuss everything that needs to be fixed before closing. Once you close and that builder gets their money, the chances of them making it a priority to fix those those items that are on the inspection report aren't very good. That's why I always recommend to take your time, do the full inspection, get the complete report, go over it with your realtor, and then sit down with the builder and get all of the things addressed before closing. Um, it's also called a punch list, which there's always items on the punch list that I recommend doing before the builder gets the money. I know that it's an exciting time and that everyone is very excited and ready to close, but what's another week to make sure that everything is completely to your standards before closing? So tip number four is gonna be to pay special attention to builders, special assessments, special taxes, um, a CDD charge, 
all of these fees that the builder, especially the national large builder, typically passes on to the consumer, the buyer, uh, they can really add up. So not only do you have your HOA fee, but then you might have a special assessment fee on top of your homeowners association fee. And then you have sometimes a special tax, which is called a CDD fee. And I'll do future videos and I'll go more in depth about your special assessments, your CDD fee that's typically about 30 years and can be a few hundred dollars a month on top of your homeowners association fee. So just be aware of all of those fees that a lot of times the large builders pass on to the customer um, that most of the time you're not aware of. The last and final tip, tip number five, closing time. It is very, very difficult to pin down an exact closing date as far as new construction being completed. And this is very difficult if you are selling another home or if you're moving from out of state because a lot of things go in into closing time with builders. So they're at the mercy of the weather, the permit and inspector people, their schedule. So there's a lot of things that they cannot pin down. And most of the time when they tell you four to six months, typically you can add at least a month or two to that timeline before you actually get to close and that is very difficult for some people when they're trying to plan so if you need an exact closing date or if you are on a timeline where you just can't wait for the new construction home to be completed then that's when i recommend to actually purchase the inventory home because you can typically schedule that closing date much more precise than the new construction home that's building from the ground up. I hope these tips and this information will help anyone looking to purchase a new construction home. If you want to know and learn more about living in the South Florida area, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell because we're going to be doing a lot more videos on life and living in the South Florida area and you don't want to miss it. See you next time on Talk with Tracy, your South Florida expert for all things real estate and lifestyle in South Florida. I know this process can seem very daunting, so I've stuck a free guide below. Feel free to click it, and it goes in-depth in the process to buy new construction.